Roseanne, it is a pleasure to meet you. I saw the trailer for the film. It looks fantastic. Uh, and it really caught me off guard, actually, because it wasn't what I was expecting. And, and that's really <laughs> cool. Now, there's, right? The, there seems to be so many influences on this story. You have uh, World War II subgenre, sci-fi period element, sci-fi sci period elements. Uh, how did all of this come together? Um, well, it was all in the scripts that I received um, when I, I guess I was looking for action genre scripts and, and I loved that it was a genre smash. I loved that it was a tonal tightrope. I loved that it was entirely unpredictable. Um, it, you, you thought that you'd seen everything in the trailer. There's, there are other elements that haven't been spoiled, hopefully, in the trailer. Um, so yeah, I, I, what I love, I just loved that it was entertaining, but it was also meaningful as well. So that, that's, that's what attracted me to this project. It almost seems like a throwback to, uh, those old classic, uh, uh, strange adventure stories that you would see, uh, a lot yeah. in comics that, that I, that I would see. So what was it about the script that wanted you to jump on board? Yeah, it was just, it was, it was the love letter to pulpy movie, you know, like a, um, when, when you were just speaking, I was thinking of amazing stories. I was thinking right. amazing as a kid, story. growing it, growing up on Steven Spielberg's amazing stories. And there was, there was, there was one about a B-17 bomber then, um, and a guy in the turret and he was a drawer and he, you know, he was, a, he was an illustrator. And anyway, so there was, there was that sort of love letter to the pulpy era of filmmaking but um but then there was meaning as well there was social resonance there was its period but it's intensely relevant to the now as well um and i just i just couldn't believe that there were all these elements in a movie that was seemingly disparate but somehow worked when they were mushed together yeah i love also that you brought up that amazing stories episode because that is the one that i clearly remember the most from my childhood it's so fascinating it's now, magical right it's magical Absolutely, as I love that story. Now, this movie takes viewers on a grand adventure. Uh, it seems uh, that that you did so much with this film's budget, like it's all on screen. Uh, what were the limits of the scope of this film? They were they were considerable. Uh, they were resource. They were location. They were. I mean, we didn't make it easy for ourselves. It's 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 set continuously across a dawn. That was the hardest thing. That it's, it starts at night and it finishes in bright daylight. So so just the gradient of the darkest dark to the to full sun is a technical challenge because everything you see out the windows isn't there. We had to build that and we had to build it scientifically. Uh, if you imagine that the ball turret is a, you know, is a, is a, a joint in a socket, right? Yeah. It's got rotational this way, but it's also got rotational that way. And we have to decide what's outside the windows for, from a number of sectors. So our, our you know, there are over 500, um, oh, there are over 300 uh, VFX shots in, in this film. Yeah. I did not know it was such a VFX heavy movie. And, and the, you know, the worst thing is, is that the best VFX are the ones that you don't notice, that you don't, that you don't even see. Hopefully right. they'll just go go past you and you don't even notice. Um, but but also there are the ones that you do see, which is a creature. You know, they we had to build a creature. And I think what we got from Where to Digital, which usually works on movies like Planet of the Apes or The Hobbit or makes giant dragons and, and you know, just giant monsters on giant budgets. We got one monster and we had to, you know, really interrogate the process so that it was, you know, that it was uh, contained and and we could achieve it within our budget. Yeah. Now, uh, switching gears for a second, Chloe is super talented. What did she bring to her character or in her performance uh, that you weren't accounting for in pre-production? She is just, I just don't know any other actor. There aren't many actors like her who'd be able to bring the emotional depth of this character from, from inside herself, because she is a woman who has been under, underestimated in real life, probably more times than should be mentioned. Um, so she brings that truth, you know, and authenticity with her on an emotional and acting level. But then technically she's so brilliant. She can learn 20 beats of action within a minute. She, uh, she got, you know, she, 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 she changed physically as well for the, for this role. I didn't I didn't necessarily ask her or tell or you know tell her to do that. She just did it because she knew that's what this role required. She wanted to be 
Ripley meets Sarah Connor meets Indiana Jones. She wanted to be that, and um, and she delivered on on all those all those counts. Yeah, I love that you said that because you really do get that vibe in the trailer of 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 those characters being embodied in, in Chloe in this film. Now, uh, your story has a lot of built in tension simply because uh, the lead is stuck in a metal box, which is an airplane uh, in the sky. Can you talk to me about some of the techniques uh, you use to shoot those more intimate scenes? Um, yeah, I mean, again, we, um, Chloe is actually claustrophobic. Um, oh. she, she, she was overcoming that as well as at the same time as acting, I could see her, you know, occasionally I could see that she was getting, you know, cold, sweaty palms because she was in an enclosed space. So, um, we had to be very careful about where we put the camera. Um, the, the history of it is, is insane because the, the, the ball, we actually made it, um, larger than it is in real life and men would sit in these things for 10 to 12 hours in the freezing cold sometimes with oxygen masks on oxygen tanks because there's no there was no oxygen at the altitude that they were flying at and some of them had to pee where they were sitting you know they couldn't they couldn't go to the bathroom there was no way and these were boys these were young 20 something boys sometimes even in their teens with the real possibility of them being shot the the, the ball turret was one of the most um, vulnerable places on the on the B-17 when you there's you know there's a famous poem about a guy speaking from after death of, of, of his innards just being just covering the inside of the B-17 because when you're shot you know anyway so sorry I'm getting I, I was fascinated by the research and the history and so there was only really one place to put the camera which was inside her head in a way um we, what we see is how she feels what we see is her mind's eye she is not the most reliable protagonist either she we don't eat, we don't always know when she's telling the truth we don't know when she's manipulating us or, or challenging us or doing something that she hasn't told us so we um we were very careful to put the character put to put the camera in her head if, if, you, if that makes sense it does it does yeah that's amazing that's crazy now uh I don't want to put the horse before the carriage, but if this film could lead into see, could this film lead into sequels or anthologies? <laughs> and have you, if so, have you thought about any direction on where you'd like to take this adventure? I, I no, I really, I really think this is a standalone movie. I mean, obviously, if people love it, I'd love if people love it. I'd love if people want to see more. Then maybe we can have that conversation. But. Um, you know the 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 movies that 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 I think of that stand alone. Um, I mean, <laughs> I was going to bring up Terminator Two, but Terminator Two is a sequel, and I was going to bring up Aliens, but Aliens is also a sequel. <laughs> um, I was going to bring up Mad Max Fury Road, but now Furiosa is coming out. Um, I was going to bring up Die Hard, but of course Die Hard's got Die Hard Two and Three, which are also really great movies. Um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say never. I'm just, I, it's just not something I'm thinking about. And of course, we don't know what happens to some of the characters in, in this film either. So it's not all tied up in a bow. So there are certainly places that this could go. Yeah. So before uh, jumping on board with this film, were you all always fascinated with World War II or did you become fascinated after taking on the project? And I, if, if you were always fascinated with it, uh, what was it that you discovered about World War II that, that really, uh, really got your attention during your research? I, I was not a, I mean, like, um, I've done history, like in, in New Zealand and Australia, there's a rich history in, of the Anzacs in the World War II. So, you know, yes, I've grown up with history and knowing a lot, a bit about the World War II from the kind of Australian, New Zealand allied perspective. And some of that made it into the movie because we had, we had American forces coming here. We had, you know, B-17s coming here for, for R&R &R and, and repairs and stuff. So that history is there. And, and um, in the story, the plane takes off from a, a New Zealand air base. Um, so, I, you know, I, but but I never set out to make a World War II movie. I'm I'm a I'm a contemporary person or or sci-fi, if anything. You know, I love I love you know from Aliens and um, Terminator Two, Blade Runner, the, those sorts of movies. I I like the future. I like I like contemporary things. But what surprised me when I read the script about you know set in the 1940s was how contemporary it felt. Was how it was about the now. How it was it, it had dealt with things that were more pertinent now than they were then. But the crucible of that time time and the gender politics of that time really made it really crunchy so I, I never felt like I needed to 
rewrite the story in our present day I felt like the world war and the you know the gremlin aspect of it which is part of the lore of that time and that place um, was the perfect place to be telling a really socially resonant story like this. Now the first trailer I saw of this I felt that like wow this 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 feels to me like people could benefit from seeing little of the plot in some of the twists and turns uh, that aren't given in the trailer so seeing very little actually can uh because I feel like this is going to be wild. I'm just so fascinated with where the adventure goes. So how would you briefly describe the movie, uh, the movie's story uh, without giving, obviously giving too much away uh, that we haven't already seen in trailers? I, I would say that this is a movie that you can't predict. It is a, it is a genre movie unlike any, unlike your usual um it's been very hard to categorize this movie <laughs> it's not a war movie uh it's not a it's, it's kind of a horror movie but it's not really a horror movie it it might be a creature feature but it's not really a creature feature it could be about gender politics but that's not all it is that's not the defining feature of it what can i tell you about the story it starts one way and then it goes in a in, on a way that you just can't you just can't predict or, or when you watch the trailer, it'll prepare you for a wild ride that you still can't, that I'm hoping that you still can't predict. Absolutely, um, 100%. Like that trailer, yeah. like I was watching it and I was like, oh, oh, it, it, it just <laughs> got me more and more uh, into the into wanting to see the film. And that, that's what I kind of miss about the theater going experience. But now we're here at home digitally, but I think this is gonna be phenomenal. Now, I wanna talk about the creature design for a second because the creature looks wild. How did you come up, how did you guys come up with that design for the creature? Well, we kind of took from research. Um, the There were Air Force pilots in that time who swore that there were these bat-like winged creatures that would, um, you know, eat, eat up their planes and cause the electrics to go funny. Um, so we sort of started from there. And then I really wanted a creature that would join the pantheon of, of creatures that sort of haunt our dreams and that we can't stop thinking about. Um, uh, I'm thinking, you know, the classic is Alien. Sure. Um, the classic, the Xenomorph, and, and then you've got Predator and Jaws. And and one thing that's very common across these creatures is the sexual element, is the abject sexual element of that. And so when we were designing the Gremlin, I thought of it as pure id, you know, pure kind of base desires. Um, it eats when it wants to eat. It, 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 it screws when it wants to screw. It, it, you know, it, it's kind of like this feral animal that sometimes looks cute, but some, but just is completely unpredictable. And, uh, and, and, and Weta Digital came to the party with us and they designed a few sort of bat-like creatures that also had, like I was inspired by hagfish. Do you know what hagfish are? I have no idea what a hagfish is. Uh, I look up hagfish and you will see one of the most astoundingly uh, abject horror creatures that you can imagine. It's this, it's, it's kind of like a, a blind eel with a mouth that sort of- um, I do know what a hagfish is after you- Right? Yes. It looks like a tooth vagina. I'm sorry. The the its its mouth looks like a tooth vagina. The 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 the, the teeth go this way, and right. there's this pink there's this pink fleshy thing, and then it it, it it's like a vulture of the deep sea, um, and when you try and catch it, it exudes um it it creates slime. It it creates giant buckets of slime so that you can't hold on to it. It's its defense mechanism. It's one of the most incredible That's creatures. Insane. Anyway. I found a hagfish and put that into <laughs> <laughs> threw that at threw that at our um our, our digital digital team and it became part of our design. Yeah, it's amazing. Now the last question I have for you is, uh, what's your philosophy uh, when to go digital and and practical effects? Um, it's it's really about the storytelling. I think um, it's it's um, I'm I'm a huge believer in um, motivated choices. So when, um, when it makes sense, you go digital and when it doesn't, you don't. I mean, there, there, were, there was a time when we were thinking of doing a puppet um, because uh, of course, Alien and Predator were, 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 made, were done with puppets or, or, or um, creatures, sure. uh, 
you know, actual corporeal things that you could touch and feel and would interact with it, with actors. There was a time when we when we were going to go down that route. And then I had a meeting with Where the Digital and they were saying, well, you could go down that that route or we can show you some things where we can we've done the veins underneath the skin. Oh, wow. Like we we've done light tests on on the the effect of light on on de on dentine they this is how scientific they go they they they're constantly reading scientific journals they 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 they're deeply involved in physics and and i know people when they watch the trailer they go this this director doesn't care about physics it's not true we did do gravity sims on certain certain shots um but we obviously we didn't do gravity sims on the on the on the one shot that everyone's talking about um but that was in the script and and i felt that it earned its place in the story even after interrogation because it's allegory it's about you know having second chances it's about luck it's about and 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 it also gives people the wild ride that they're looking for as well so um, we do care deeply about vfx and we care deeply about science and physics it's just um you know we we choose we choose when to when to pull our punches and when not to yeah well look i'm extremely excited for this film and thank you so much for your time and hopefully we can chat again uh once the film's released yeah i'd love to thanks joseph awesome.